Therefore, it's time for member statements. The member from Wellington, Carlton Hills. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Last week, my federal counterpart, Mike Chong, spoke in the House of Commons to congratulate the town of Halton Hills on achieving recognition as the most patriotic town in Canada. Here, here. Today, I'm glad to have this chance to do the same here in this House. On May 21, 2015, I attended a meeting of the Halton Hills Cultural Roundtable Group in Georgetown as we began to make plans as to how to best celebrate the 150th anniversary of Confederation. That meeting, more than two years ago, spawned a great idea which began to emerge in Halton Hills, that being we should proudly fly as many Canadian flags as we could in the lead-up to Canada Day. The Halton Hills Most Patriotic Town Challenge Committee was soon organized, and the idea took off. With the help of enthusiastic volunteers, generous sponsors, the Halton Hills Chamber of Commerce, and of course, a support of mayor, town council and staff, by Canada Day, our residents registered and flew an amazing 57,073 Canadian flags, an average of two per household. I want to thank everyone who was involved. During World War II, my hometown of Arthur was recognized as the most patriotic village in Canada by the Toronto Star. This was based on the large percentage of Arthur's residents who had voluntarily enlisted in the Canadian Armed Forces and the exceptional take-up of war bond and victory bond sales in Arthur. Arthur continues to proudly promote itself as Canada's most patriotic village. And so today, I can truthfully attest that I hail from Canada's most patriotic village and represent Canada's most patriotic town. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Very nice. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Toronto Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, this week the United Nations reported that carbon dioxide in the atmosphere had reached the highest level in three million years, setting the stage for global temperatures outside our experience as a civilization. The level of greenhouse gases has increased at a record speed in the last year. The head of the United Nations Environment Program calls for a new sense of urgency and action to reverse soaring emissions. Speaker, neither Canada nor Ontario are on track to meet their commitments to reduce emissions. This is irresponsible and it is dangerous. We saw in Texas, Florida and Puerto Rico the impact of extreme weather events accelerated by climate change. We've seen in Toronto and in Windsor the impact of flooding accelerated in a heating world. Ontario needs to get moving on climate action, it needs to reverse the trend of increasing emissions, and it needs to do it now. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further members, a statement. The member from Northumberland, Northumberland Quincy West. Well, thank you, Speaker. There doesn't seem to be any better opportunity than Halloween to talk about the blockbuster horror movie of the summer, It. The movie adapted from a Stephen King horror novel is set in late 1980s and features seven young outcasts in small town U.S. who are about to encounter their worst nightmare, a creepy evil that surfaces from the sewers every 27 years to terrorize the town children. The friends must come together to overcome their own personal fears and battle the murderous, bloodthirsty clown known as Pennywise. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, it's not all doom and gloom. Many of the film scenes were shot allocation throughout the GTA, including the town of Port Hope Town Hall, Memorial Park in Port Hope, and the Chemical Capital Arts Center. During the filming process, the production generated millions of dollars in economic activity in southern Ontario. Over 60 days of filming production of the film had a positive economic impact on the municipality of Port Hope. We get this, Mr. Speaker, over half a million dollars injected into the community from permits, local fees, local accommodation, employment, and other production costs. I echo the words of our own minister, Minister of Tourism, Culture, and Sport. This is a perfect example of a cultural economic role major film, films project can play, creating jobs, supporting local businesses, and promoting Ontario brand. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke. On Saturday, September 30th, I had the opportunity to visit the Ottawa Valley Waste Recovery Centre as they celebrated another milestone. The OVWRC is 15 years old. Since opening in 2000, September of 2002, 
They have kept over 220,000 tonnes of material out of landfills, including over 95,000 tonnes of recycling, 81,000 tonnes of organic material, and over 46,000 tonnes of construction and demolition waste. I was there to help acknowledge a community celebration recognizing the contribution the OVWRC has made for the communities that make up the partnership, the Town of Petawawa, City of Pembroke, Townships of Laurentian Valley, and North Algona Wilberforce. In my time as MPP, I've had the opportunity to tour the site on numerous occasions, and I've always been tremendously impressed by the work they have done in the field of waste management. The centre has been a leader in waste diversion, achieving numbers that far exceed the ones that the province has been able to get elsewhere. Furthermore, it has gained wide recognition within the waste diversion industry, established award-winning programs, and has reached significant milestones. The celebration that was held on September 30th welcomed people from the community, young and old, so they could learn about the work that is being done there. As part of an ongoing education program, the OVWRC continues to connect with the community. I would like to take this time to congratulate the municipal partners, management and staff in creating something that everyone in the Valley can be proud of. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. This past weekend, I attended a rally at St. Clair College in my riding of Windsor West. Like thousands of other college faculty from across Ontario, the workers at St. Clair College have been on strike for three weeks. Everyone wants this strike to end. Students want to get back to school because they are worried about losing their academic year and money. Faculty want to get back to work with the assurance that they won't have to sign a new contract every four months. Earlier today, my colleague from London West asked the Minister of Advanced Education about this strike, and the minister responded that she is talking with students and working to get the parties back to the table. But just yesterday, she wouldn't talk to the faculty that were waiting to speak with her outside a college mental health conference. Mr. Speaker, we do not need this government to table back to work legislation. That is disrespectful of the bargaining process. What we do need is for the government to push the College Employer Council to get back to actually negotiating with striking faculty. Negotiating is about listening to each other and working together toward an agreement, but the Employer Council has walked away from the table. The faculty has been ready to negotiate for weeks, and we need this Liberal government to push the College Employer Council to get back to the bargaining table. Thank you for the member, same as the member from Eglinton Lawrence. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, this Thursday, November 2nd, marks the start of Holocaust Education Week. Sorry. Beginning in 1980, Holocaust Education Week examines how the Holocaust is understood today and why. From November 2nd to 9th, the events will be taking place that examine the post-Holocaust period and how certain pivotal moments have shaped our understanding of the Holocaust since World War II. While examining the events and moments th that have shaped our current understanding of the Holocaust, Holocaust Education Week is equally about how information about the Holocaust is taught and how it will be taught and understood by future generations. Mr. Speaker, Holocaust Education Week is a vital time to remember and educate ourselves about the Holocaust and to remember and commemorate the six million Jews who were murdered in cold blood at the hands of the Nazis. We can all agree that we must never forget the atrocities that took place during the Holocaust. We are moving into a time when fewer and fewer Holocaust survivors are here to tell us, and I've got the most Holocaust survivors of any riding in uh, Ontario who live in the Baycrest area. I'm proud to have them there. We must ensure that future generations learn about and remember the Holocaust so that history never does repeat itself, especially when it comes to this horrific period uh, and in the history of mankind when there was just so much needless killing and slaughtering of innocent people. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Dufferin Caledon. Thank you. The Ontario College strike is now in its third week, three weeks where students have been out of the classroom, away from their teachers and peers. I've received many calls and emails from students and parents in Dufferin Caledon who are concerned the impact is having on their education. To quote from one parent, our son has worked extremely hard to pay for his tuition, and it is unacceptable that he sits idle at home during the strike. 
Another student wrote me to say, this dispute is putting the future of students and our province in uncertainty. We hope that you recognize this problem and work with all sides to find a solution as quickly as possible. A long strike will leave our students behind. Students and parents work hard to get their children to college. They've already paid their tuition, they're paying rent, and depending on the length of the strike, it may delay students in starting their summer jobs, further hurting their ability to continue going to school. The minister said, quote, we want both sides back together and we want to reach an agreement as soon as possible. But the truth is, the two sides haven't had a single meeting since the strike began three weeks ago. The minister needs to articulate exactly what she's going to do to ensure our students get the education they deserve. Let's put our students first. Here, here. Thank you. So the from Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to inform the House of a spookily fun event that happened this weekend in my riding of Davenport. This past Saturday, despite some truly frightful weather, the Regal Heights Res Residents Association, the North Cliff Village Residents Association, and the Regal Heights Village BIA all came together to put on a fantastically festive pumpkin carving event at North Cliff Parkette. About 60 kids and their families showed off their artistic talents, slicing, dicing, carving, and scooping some ghoulish gourds and having a ton of fun doing so. I myself got into the fun, of course, with adult supervision from my staff and artistic direction from the kids. I managed to carve a pretty very scary smiley face. I want to thank Maurice Williams from the North Cliff Village Residents Association, as well as John Keating from the Res uh, Regal Heights Vill uh, Residents Association, as well as all the volunteers who came together to make this event as fun as possible for everyone. I also want to share a special thank you to Freddy's No Frills for the donation of some of the pumpkins and to Sun Sun Market for getting us the best deal on the rest. Communities like this make Davenport one of the best places to live, and I can't wait to participate again next year. And seeing that tonight is Halloween, I want to wish all of you a spooky and safe Halloween. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Huron Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to encourage everyone to don their greens and show their 4-H pride this month by marking Show Your 4-H Colors Day tomorrow, November 1st, and through the entire month of November. 4-H works to connect tomorrow's leaders with today's mentors and provide them with the opportunities to grow and give back to their communities in positive ways. In the spirit of learning to do by doing, 4-H is a leadership development program that has a very strong presence throughout Ontario and gives young people a chance to learn organizational and meeting management skills. It also reinforces the importance of being engaged and active in your community. There are so many ways you can show your 4-H pride and support the great work of this organization. Snap a selfie wearing your greens and post it to social media with hashtag show your 4-H colors. Download the 4-H Twibbon to pro profile picture for the month of November, or stop by the 4-H exhibit at the Royal Agricultural Winter Fair to chat with members. By the way, the Royal starts this Friday and runs through November 12th. Go down to Exhibition Place. It's the one time in the year that the country comes to the city, and it should not be missed. In particular, this coming weekend, 4-H members from, from across Ontario and other provinces will vie for the coveted champion titles for Go for the Gold, Young Speakers for Agriculture, as well as the traditional livestock shows. The tie that binds all 4-Hers together, no matter where they call home, is the pledge to use their head, heart, health and hands for greater service for their club, their community and their country. Sure. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It's